Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order. It's the regular meeting of the Delanco Board of Education. It is January 6th at 7.04 p.m. Can I have a moment of silence, please? And can everybody salute the flag? Gotcha. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so I will do the oath of office now. I'm gonna do it in alphabetical order. So when I call your name, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. Um, Mr. Robert Dovey Jr. Can you um, unmute your speaker, your microphone? Um, bottom left of your screen, maybe? There you go. Got it, sorry about that. Okay. That's okay. I state your name. I D. Robert Dovey Jr. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And to the governments established in the United States and this state. And to the governments established in the United States and in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. I state your name. I D. Robert Dovey Jr. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I possess the qualifications prescribed by law. That I possess the qualifications prescribed by law. For the office of member of a board of education. Um, let's see, a member of the Board of Education. I'm not disqualified as a voter pursuant to RS 19 4-1. And that I am not disqualified as a voter pursuant to RS 19 4-1. I'm not disqualified due to conviction of a crime nor disqualified due to a conviction of a crime. Or offense listed in NJSA 18A colon 12-1. Or offense listed in NJSI, uh, or 18A 12-1. And that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly. And that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all the duties of that office according to the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations on your election. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, Mr. Stephen McLaughlin. Hi. Hi. Um, I state your name. Hi, Stephen McLaughlin. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Constitution mm -hmm. of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And to the governments established in the United States and this state. And to the governments established in, uh, in the United States and this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. I state your name. I, Stephen McLaughlin. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I possess the qualifications prescribed by law. That I possess the qualifications prescribed by law for the office of member of a board of education. For the office of a member of a board of education. I'm not disqualified as a voter pursuant to RS 19 colon 4 1. I'm not disqualified as a voter pursuant to RS 19 4 1. I'm not disqualified due to conviction of a crime. I'm not disqualified due to conviction of a crime. Or offense listed in NJSA 18A 12-1. Or offense listed in NJSA 18A 
and that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly, and that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all the duties of that office according to the best of my ability. Perform all the duties of that office according to the best of my ability. Congratulations on your election. Thank you. And Mrs. Catherine Tersa Keeley. Keeley. Yes. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Where did you go? There you are. Okay. Um, I state your name. I, Catherine Tersa Keeley. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And to the governments established in the United States in this state. And to the governments established in the United States in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. I, I state your name. I, Catherine Tersich Keeley. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I possess the qualifications prescribed by law. That I possess the qualifications prescribed by law. For the office of member of a board of education. For the office of member of a board of education. I'm not disqualified as a voter pursuant to RS 19 4-1. I'm not disqualified as a voter pursuant to RS 19-4-1. I'm not disqualified due to conviction of a crime. I'm not disqualified due to conviction of a crime. Or offense listed in NJSA 18A 12-1. Or offense listed in NJSA 18A 12-1. And that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly. And that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly. Perform all the duties of that office according to the best of my ability. Perform all the duties of that office according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me. Congratulations on your election. Congratulations. Okay, so now we'll do a roll call vote. Um, a roll call. Mr. Caliguire? Here. Ms. Dharma? Here. Mr. Dovey? Here. Mr. Cameron Jenkins? Present. Mr. Phil Jenkins? Here. Um, Mrs. Karmanugian. Here. Mr. Litwack. Here. Mr. McLaughlin. Here. Mrs. Tersich Keeley. Here. I will get that down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, reading a, a statement of adequate notice. Notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given as follows. Advertising in the Burlington County Times and the Carrier Post on January 30th, 2020. Posting on school bulletin boards and main entrance doors on December 23rd, 2020. Sending a notice to the Burlington County Times and the Carrier Post on December 23rd, 2020. Filing written notice with the clerk of Delanco Township on December 23rd, 2020. Mm -hmm. and posting the notice electronically on the district website, www.delanco.com on December 23rd, 2020. And now I would like to open it up for nominations for the board president. Okay, this is Phil. I would like to nominate Marissa Karamanugian for board president. And the reason why, within this last year, we've had a tremendous amount of things going on. Marissa has been right next to me, working with me, and she has been a total part of what's going on with where we're at. There. I cannot think of a person that is more qualified to be president than Marissa. That's why I'd like to make the nomination. I'd like Thank to you. second the nomination. This is Harry. This is Harry. I'd like to second the nomination of Marissa. Thank you. I think. Are there any other nominations? Oh, I'm sorry. President. Thank you. I nominate I myself, Vera Darmo, for board president. The reason is. I've been a teacher for about 20 years. I'm the only one who has experience in the, in the remote environment that we're now in. I've gotten the budget packet for public viewing. I've worked with our present board members in the past to get our meetings on video. And I believe I have the qualifications to be board president after being on the board a year. 
This is Vince. I'll second. Okay. Do I have any other nominations for board president? Okay, hearing there are no further nominations, the floor is closed for nominations for board president. Um, Mr. Mersinger, did you go over with the board members how they should proceed? So, with their uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Sal. Although the board agenda says roll call vote, that's actually not accurate. Uh, it, it should say simply that the board will vote uh, by written ballot. It is not a secret ballot in that uh, we the votes are not hidden once they're once they're shared with the public uh, so for example if a board member uh, votes for anyone they have to state their name uh, as the voter state who they're voting for and for what office uh, on the written ballot so the way that we're doing it this year uh, because we're not in person is that we would use emails that would be sent to Vicki LaSalle and myself just uh, and, and one sent to me as basically as a fail safe, just in case Vicky doesn't receive the messages or something. Uh, so those votes would, would be official written votes, uh, just like a written vote would happen on a piece of paper. Uh, this has been confirmed with our board solicitor. So uh, that is the default method of voting is the, the written ballot. So without further ado, uh, since uh, Mrs. LaSalle is presiding, are, are we ready to uh, have the board members submit their votes? Yes, board members, please cast your vote. Uh, how did this get done? I need help. I need help. Harry, you said that you need help? Yeah. In what way? Uh, how can we help? Um, where do I go to vote? How do I get off of where I am? So you're in the Zoom meeting right now, but if you have it at full screen, it might be harder to see other things that are available to you. No, I just have it in four. Blocks. If you minimize it, you should be able to access. Mr. Mersinger. Yeah. Maybe for Harry, maybe. I mean, would it still be acceptable if you texted it as well? Would that be easier for him? Any type of written vote is acceptable according to the solicitor, as long as it's confirmed that the vote is indeed from that person. Can I check Vicki? You absolutely could if that's the only option that you have. Well, I think that, that would be the most official. expeditious. Yeah. Vicki, what number? I'm fine with that uh, as long as um, the presiding officer, the, the current presiding officer is fine with that, simply because the, the solicitor said that if we're doing a written ballot, that as long as we know and can confirm from the it person. It needs to be in writing. Well, it needs to be in writing unless the board really wanted it to be a voice vote, but that's that's not necessarily the... the I just I texted you. Mr. Litwack. Yeah, I got it. Okay. And so... Mine just got bounced back to me. This is Robert. My vote says address not found. <laughs> Uh, vlasalle at delanco.com. Bob, are you using your district email or your personal email? My personal email. I have I haven't set up for my um, district email. I All right, I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you something and say reply to this. Okay. Reply all. Yeah. yeah I'm wondering. If Would have been much easier doing it verbally. Yeah, it would be much e easier to have this in person too. So true. Yeah. Did 
Did you get Bob, that vote? It, even though you said it bounced, Bob, it's we. I did receive a vote from you. Oh well, yeah, yours is good. It's um. It was Vicky's. Okay. Vicky's. Uh, I think for some reason, uh, the address I had it was saved in my system, but I think it's dropping a letter. So uh, at this moment, I've received five votes. So votes from five board members. Uh, so I'm not sure if Vicky has received all nine. And uh, I, I could take this moment. Seven. You have seven, okay. I could take this moment to let everyone know that, uh, you know, when the board votes for a president, you know, we have two nominees tonight, but uh, if there are more than two nominees, it actually creates certain uh, challenges when it comes to the process because it could uh, hinder the possibility of getting a majority if you have three candidates and each one gets three votes, for example, or one gets four votes and the majority is five votes uh, at least. So that's the, uh, that's the rule according to our policy. And they battle it out. Uh, discussing this with our <laughs> solicitor, it's interesting that uh, plurality votes, meaning already it, not a majority, but a plurality, meaning just simply having the highest number of votes uh, can also be accepted at times, depending on what your policy says. Uh, so it's uh, it's an interesting topic. I've been exploring it, but uh, no matter what, I've now received six votes. How about you, Vicki? Based on my count, Vicki, you might have uh, eight votes at this point, or I, sorry, seven votes. I have seven. 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 Yeah, Vicky may have mine, but Joe, I didn't send it to okay, you. Okay, okay, yeah. understood. So I just got eight. eight. And then once all the votes are received, then Vicky will read them aloud. That's why I said it's not a, officially a secret ballot. It's just done this way so that early votes uh, will not impact later votes. Bob, did you get the email from Joe? Uh, yes, I thought he passed all my vote to, to you. Yeah, I can I can forward it, okay. and then that will still be official. Yep, we're good. Um, okay, so I, I'll read them in the order that they came in. Perfectly fine. Did you re receive all nine? Yes. One, two, three. I thought I did. Mm -hmm. Did you forward Bob's? Yes, uh, just a couple seconds ago. Okay, I have nine now. All right. Um, okay, so Ms. Darmo votes for Ms. Darmo. Mr. Caliguire votes for Ms. Darmo. Mr. Jenkins, Mr. Phil Jenkins votes for uh, Marissa, uh, Mrs. Cameron Higgian. Mr. Cameron Jenkins votes for Mrs. Cameron Ugian. Mr. McLaughlin votes for Ms. Darmo. Mrs. Cameron Ugian votes for Mrs. Cameron Ugian. Mrs. Tersich Keeley, did I do that right that time? Votes for Ms. Darmo. Mr. Mr. Dovey votes for Mrs. Karmanugian. And Mr. Litwack votes for Mrs. Karmanugian. Mrs. Karamanugian has five votes. Ms. Darmo has four. So Ms. Ms. Karamanugian is the uh, new president. Thank you. Congratulations, Marissa. Congratulations, Marissa. Congratulations on your election. Thank you. I'd like to open the board of the
the vote for or the nominations for vice president. I'd like to nominate Catherine Tursich Killing for vice president of the board. The reason I'm doing that, she's a mother, she has a young child, she's going to be proactive. And what I really care about about because I think this district is in a financial crisis is she knows how to look at financial data. That's what we really need. She's done a lot with her husband to foster relationships between the community and the school. And I know she's very organized and meticulous. She'll be a great vice president. I'll second that nomination. I would like to place the name of uh... Cameron Jenkins in nomination for vice president uh, um, due to his, uh, his I guess, uh, experience in the past year and also the fact that he is bringing a perspective of a local student who went through the school system, uh, bringing that experience to the table. And this is Phil and I will second that. I'll nominate Harry Litwack. I know that he was interested as well in running for vice president. Uh, I would nominate him because he has years of experience. He has a lot of educational background in the financial aspect of it and in the curriculum and academics. Okay, are there any further nominees for vice president? And just to note for everyone, uh, there was a nomination and a second uh, for most of them, but a second is actually not required per policy. So uh, it's, it's, mm -hmm. safe, it's not required per policy. So we have a situation in which three candidates are nominated. Uh, what this could mean is that we do not arrive at a majority, depending on the way the votes fall. Uh, if that happens, uh, we need to repeat the process until we arrive at a majority. If we can't arrive at a majority uh, through this process, then the executive county superintendent uh, um, uh, for Burlington County actually makes the decision. So what I would say is a word of caution to all the board members that uh, as much as I respect those who work at the county level, it would be my preference that we do not have them make the decision for our local board uh, to determine who our vice president is. Are, are you in the board office, Joe? Joe, are you in the board office? Yes, this is not a fake background. <laughs> okay, so, so we, we, can't, we can't storm the board office to get what we want? <laughs> Harry, I know you're talking about uh, world events and I, I yeah, there, there are definitely larger things at stake uh, than- It's the closest avenue. I, I understand. I may have got my yeah. Harry. But either way, yes, no, I'm, I'm hoping nobody storms the board office at this moment <laughs> in any event i'm just saying that to the board so that we understand however the votes fall we might need to repeat the process depending on on that okay so we can vote now if the presiding officer is ready then yes ready to there the are votes. no further nominations so board members please cast your vote for vice president all right
Okay. <laughs> Mr. Litwack votes for Mr. Litwack. Let's see what we did there. Ms. Darmo votes for Kath, uh, Mrs. Tersich Keeley. Mr. McLaughlin votes for Mrs. Tersich Keeley. Tersich Keeley votes for Mrs. Tersich Keeley. Mrs. Karen Manugian votes for Mr. Litwack. Mr. Cameron Jenkins votes for Mr. Jenkins. Mr. Phil Jenkins votes for Mr. Cameron Jenkins. Mr. Dovey votes for Mr. Jenkins. Mr. Calaguire votes for Mrs. Tersich Keeley. Mrs. Tersich Keeley has four votes, Mr. Jenkins has three, and Mr. Litwack has two. We do not have a quorum, we do not have a majority of the quorum, so we will need to um, cast another ballot. So, um, uh, would you like to? Well, pri prior to that, Vicki or, or Mrs. LaSalle, uh, just to let the board members know that uh, any of the nominees can remove themselves from contention at any point, at which point, you know, we could have two people being voted upon or one or whatever, uh, depending on what the candidates decide. Um, so uh, Mrs. Tersich, uh, Mrs. Tersich Keeley had the highest number of votes, but did not have five votes representing a, a majority of the full voting board. Uh, so it's not impossible for that to happen on a second vote, as we know, but I just wanted to let everyone know that it is possible for uh, any of the members that are nominated to remove themselves from contention. All right. Well, it sounds like we're going to have to vote again. Board members, please cast your vote. I'm driving through a dead zone right now, so if I start disconnecting and reconnecting, just be aware of that. Okay. Did you send your vote in, Ken? Vicki, can you confirm if you got my email? Literally just came in. Okay. All right, good. Because this Vermont connection is real bad right now. Got it. Okay. 
Okay. Mr. Litwack voted for Mr. Litwack. Okay, Mr. McLaughlin voted for Mrs. Tersich Keeley. Mr. Dovey voted for Mr. Jenkins. Mr. Phil Jenkins voted for Mr. Jenkins. Mrs. Karamanugian voted for Mr. Jenkins. Mr. Calaguire voted for Mrs. Tersich Keeley. Mrs. Tersich Keeley voted for Mrs. Tersich Keeley. Ms. Dharma voted for Mrs. Tersich Keeley. And Mr. Cameron Jenkins voted for Mr. Jenkins. And we have a tie at four for Mrs. Tersich Keeley and Mr. Jenkins. Mr. Litwack has one vote. Are your doors locked, Joe? <laughs> uh, yeah, they're locked. You need a swipe card to enter. So uh, let me get a let me get a let me get a coin to flip. Well, all right. Well, we have a tie vote. A tie vote is still considered a failure to elect, meaning you know we we don't have the majority at this stage. It's still a it's not even a plurality at this stage because it's a tie. Uh, so um, we would move. We would either move to vote again. Uh, I would just say again, you know, any. Board member may remove themselves from contention. Why don't you just do the easy thing and ask Harry what he'd like to do? Uh, because we have to have a vote. Okay. And, and that's the way it's done. And by voting, so I'm going to flip a coin. Okay, I know who I'm voting for, maybe. <laughs> I can abstain, can I not? Okay, you, board members, please cast your vote for vice can, president. Can I abstain from voting? Well, board, board members are permitted to abstain when they're conflicted or, uh, you know, past practice will show that abstentions can happen based on just not feeling comfortable with the with voting. So I No, I called it in and it said you are muted to unmute press star six. I don't know. I don't get it. I, I turned that on. And it went flying. I don't know where. Well, anyhow, uh, so we would have the third round of voting if you haven't already done so, and we do have the the emails, you know, timestamps which which round everything's occurring in. So. And I can't hear. Them. Yeah, that they can't hear you. And you were. He was just talking. Now what? Just waiting for one more. And there it is. Well, this is certainly the most interesting vote I've seen in seven years. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Dovey votes for Ribbit. Mr. Jenkins. <laughs> Mrs. Karamanugian votes for Mr. Jenkins. Ms. Darmo votes for Mrs. Tersich Keeley. Mr. Calaguire votes for Mrs. Tersich Keeley.
Excuse me for a second, I'm just making sure I'm reading the right ones. Yeah, the, the newest ones, Vicki, should all be time stamped uh, from 7.38 onward. On. Yeah. Gmail. Mm. 38. Okay. Um, Mr. McLaughlin votes for Mrs. Tersich Keeley. I apologize for that delay. Mr. Mr. Jen uh, Cameron Jenkins votes for Mr. Jenkins. <clears throat> Mrs. Tersich Keeley votes for Mrs. Tersich Keeley. Mr. Phil Jenkins votes for Mr. Jenkins. Mr. Litwack abstains. And I would, I would, uh, whole year. I would suggest in the next round, since I seem to be um, the bridge between two opposing forces, that two people from each of the sides decides to vote for me as a unifying person on the board from two distinct entities that seem to exist. So Mr. Litwack, you're suggesting that they vote for you and give yeah, you the majority. It's the, it's, it's the eternal, you know, so someone from either side gets off the seesaw Well, I don't get a vote, but I also don't foresee that happening. <clears throat> Harry, I see you being the tiebreaker all year. You're gonna so, have to start making a decision one way or the other. Yeah, so hey, Mr. Litwack, you gotta, you gotta make votes. You are free to abstain, but if- folks, I've been patient for eight and nine years mm -hmm. trying to get stuff accomplished and now's the time to do it. So I think that I know what I'm doing I've been doing this stuff for 50 years because people have different political agendas. And at the moment, this sounds like it's the best idea, even though some people haven't educated themselves to how the school board system works. That I'm, I'm saying, fine, I think I'm the person that should be the vice president under the circumstances that exist. Well, Harry, uh, you're, you're, you are free to vote for yourself or abstain or vote for the other candidates, but yeah. if it remains deadlocked, then the executive county superintendent will decide. Well, we let the executive have to county say we, we have to move forward and then let the county decide. If, if neither one of the two sides or both of the sides can't move off their position, that's fine by me. That's fine by me. I'm saying that I present myself as someone with that's worked in an honorable way to present information to the township, to the board. So if people can do it better, go ahead. Didn't, didn't if this? not, every round of voting, I'm either going to abstain or vote for myself. So I'm saying in advance that unless two people from each side throw in with me somehow by just voting for me. Then let it go to the county of superintendent and that's on the everybody else on the board, not on me. Well, that's fine. I'm let it go to the county, county superintendent. For a political cause or for a certain uh, group. I'm just trying to- I agree to with have Mr. Jenkins, effect. let it go to county. I think the letting it go to the county, though, is that now this local board has given up its local control to elect its own officers. To me, that's a fundamental issue. Well, it's quite obvious that, you know, we've got four people that want one person, four people that want another person, and one person that doesn't wish to vote. Let's let it go to the county. We still have a president right now who I think is very capable of running the show. Bill, you're misrepresenting my county. position. I said that I think I should be the person. And that could, would be one of the considerations that the county office would also consider. So Maybe they don't want you, Harry. In my mouth, or 
tell me what my position is or taint the you know the process please well harry you're saying that others could change their votes and give you the majority i'm no, it, it's not a, that because the way the votes would be the one the president did that president changed her vote oh that's fine i'm not saying that she couldn't change her vote what i'm saying is I just don't foresee it considering the way the votes have gone. But what do I know? I don't, like I said, I don't get a vote. I just, I'm, I'm just observing the proceedings and helping to guide it. Uh, other than me, if, if, if it's a better system for me to just flip a coin, let it go to, to a person at least to, to make that decision. If the, if the town of Delanco doesn't want to make its own home rule, so be it. Let the county. But Harry, I would make the case that you can make the decision tonight rather than having I have. County I voted for myself. I've abstained. No but, one else other than the president has moved off their position. But more, the more authority that the county has to determine what happens in Delanco, the less authority this board has. That Which might be a good thing at this point. That, that might I'm be saying. a good thing. That might be a good thing at this point. Can I suggest doing another if, round of voting and just see if anybody, if, if whatever you have suggested has changed anybody's minds? And then if that doesn't work. Phil, you're the president. You, you know, you, you said county. I mean, the, the board's deciding this matter, right? Well, we, we have a new president. Marissa is the president. Yep. <laughs> then I'm. Well, and, and my suggestion would be to vote again to see if there's any change in how people are feeling and how they want to vote to see now knowing what we know to be true from the last three votes that we took. Let's see what happens. And then if we're still at the same impasse, then we'll have to go to the county and the superintendents for the determination. I would just like to add that as a board member, we're supposed to be keeping in mind the will of the board, not the will of the individual. So. Just keep that in mind when you're making your vote. You're here. here. I need a little bit more practice saying your last name, so. <laughs> who, who, I don't know who said that. I don't know where that Catherine. came from. Catherine. I said that, that was me, Catherine. Okay, but what do you mean by that? Board members, can you please cast your vote for vice president one more time? Harry, you know what you would say about this? In any other circumstances, you would say that you're glad that the children are here, here to see democracy in action. Because I would. It is. Many times. <laughs> this is. This is democracy in action. Absolutely. And I know the children are waiting to hear their names announced for student the, recognition. The, the children of the democracy are bated breath, depending on who's going to be the school board vice president. Sorry, kids. <laughs> Okay, I have all the votes now. I'll start with Mr. Litwack. He votes for Mr. Litwack. I'm in the lead. I'm in the lead. I won. Let's stop now. Let's stop now. <laughs> I'm ahead. I think I won. Marissa, what do you think? Mm -hmm. I don't know what to think. It's not done yet. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep the day in a sense of uh, proportion. There are eight more votes. Mr. Sorry. Dovey, did you reply? He did. Did you type in your reply? He sent a fourth vote. Uh, Vicki, look at the subject line. It says fourth vote. OK. 
Gotcha. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, just want to make sure I have it right. <laughs> um, Mr. Dovey votes for Cameron Jenkins. It's a tie. No, it's a tie. Um, Mrs. Karamanugian votes for Mr. Jenkins. Ms. Darmo votes for Mrs. Tersich Keeley. Mr. Cameron Jenkins votes for Mr. Jenkins. Mr. McLaughlin votes for Mrs. Tersich Keeley. Mr. Phil Jenkins votes for Mr. Jenkins. <laughs> Mrs. Tersich Keeley votes for Mrs. Tersich Keeley. Mr. Caliguire votes for Mrs. Tersich Keeley. So we have ended in a tie and it will go to the county. All right. So, uh, what I'll do is the next steps I will take is I will share this information with the county office, including every round of voting, uh, every vote. So Vicki and I will, will talk about it, compare notes, make sure we have everything correct. Uh, every round of voting, every single vote, our board policy, uh, the, the information from our solicitor and say, here's what we have. And uh, the executive county superintendent will deliberate on it and make whatever decision they make. Now, I have, uh, it, this is my 19th year in public education, 12th year as an administrator, seventh year in Delanco. Um, I actually have not witnessed this before. So having not witnessed it, I'm not experienced with how the executive county superintendent makes that determination. But uh, it's something I'm certainly going to be discussing with our solicitor and with the county office uh, ASAP. Well, you think, do you think maybe, you think maybe that he'll drop everything else and this will become the, the number one thing on his plate? Well, probably not. But I, 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 I would most likely get a response within a week. The county office is very good at helping the districts with any issues that we're facing. It, you know, if we if we reach out to them. So the challenge in this right now, though, is we have a brand new executive county superintendent that was just put in place uh, prior to winter break. We've actually had three executive county superintendents over the past year. Uh, the, the one who left uh, became one of the deputy commissioners, I believe, uh, Daryl Minus Vincent. Uh, then we had an interim, and now we have our, our new executive county superintendent. Who, so, who is, who is that? Steps will be taken. Who, who is the new county super? The, the, the new Burlington County Executive County Superintendent. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I, I haven't talked with him enough to, to even like really know him yet, but uh, I, I, I have to look back through my email because it's only probably been about a month to say, well, here's his name. But prior to him, there was an interim. Her name was mm -hmm. Hernandez Mano. So, and then, uh, let's see, let me, let, let me look this up. What, Vicky, did you have the name? I do not. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking it up because he's literally only been there a short time. So let's see. And Harry, I know you've been in the education field for a number of years. You know, you might, you might actually, uh, you might know him. Possibly. Is it is it Ray Marini? That's it. Yeah, Ray Marini. Yeah. I think so. How's the last name? I'm not, I'm not familiar with him. I actually haven't interacted with him yet. I've known Daryl Minus Vincent to be executive county superintendent yeah. for years already. Uh, then we had Yasmin uh, for just a few months, and now it's Ray Marini. Yes, thank you. Uh, so What's the last name? What's Marini. The last? It's spelled M-A-R-I-N-I. -I. Raymond Marini. Oh, cousin Ray. Yeah, sure. <laughs> But anyway, Ray Marini, who I have yet to meet or even really truly interact with yet because of the circumstances with him just being put into his office recently, um, I'll be reaching out to him right away and we'll, we'll figure this out. Great opportunity uh, to get to know him. 
Absolutely. <laughs> but still, as I've said to the board, it's I do see it as a shame. It, this is an opportunity for there to be a local decision made and it's going to the county office to someone that I, I don't even know that none of us know. He just arrived. So it's um, that that is a shame. And, and to me, a loss of an opportunity for local control over over what happens. So true. Could we move on with the meeting, though? Yes, we can. So the newly elected president will now take the floor. So Mrs. Karamanugi and I turn the meeting over to you. Thank you so much. So we'll start with the approval of the following reorganization items. Now, do you want me to read this in its entirety or do you want me to read um, letter A and then just say, because it's sort of ridiculous a. amount of information. A, and then when you get to B, you can just start on page two that uh, now therefore be it resolved. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so A, appointment of the following, Victoria LaSalle, CPA as board secretary, Joseph Mersinger as assistant board secretary, and Victoria LaSalle, CPA, as Joint Insurance Fund Delegate. B, appointment of official professionals. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the board as follows. A one, a professional services contract is awarded to the listed providers for the services for the period commencing January 6, 2021, through the 12th month period thereafter. The board secretary is authorized to ex execute um, a contract with them for the same. Three, notice of this award shall be published in the official newspapers of the board as required by the public school contracts law, PSCL, and four, a copy of the contracts for the services shall be maintained at the board offices and available for public inspection. List of awarded professionals, Parker McKay as school solicitor, labor negotiator, and bond counsel. Bowman and Company LLP as school auditor per peer review through uh, October 2017. Laura Bruno, MD, as school physician. Garrison Architects as architect of record. C. Designate Burlington County Times and or Courier Post as official newspapers and for New Jersey Cooperative Bidding Program bid requirements. Ashbury Park Press. D. Designate Investors Bank as with president, vice president, business administrator, and superintendent as signers on accounts as assigned. <laughs> e, adoption of resolution setting the regular meeting, monthly meetings on the second Wednesday of the month at 7 p.m. in the cafeteria of the M. Joan Pearson School with exceptions noted on attached exhibit, exhibit C. F, designation of place for the posting of meeting, meeting notices to be the M. Joe Pearson School, the Walnut Street School, the Board of Education Office, filing written notice with the clerk of the Lanco Township, sending notice to the board's official newspapers and the annual notice to be advertised in the board's official newspapers. G, readoption re of the existing board policies, curriculum for grades K through eight and textbooks for grades K through eight currently in effect. H, readoption of existing contracts and agreements I, appointment of James Heiser as the district qualified purchasing agent with awarding of contracts up to the bid threshold of 44,000 and quotes up to 66, 6,600. Appointment of the superintendent as the affirmative action public agency compliant officer for matters relating to students, staff, and visitors. Appointment of the business administrator for as the affir affirmative action policy agency compliant officer for purchasing matters. L, appointment of the superintendent as the district 504 program officer, appointment of the superintendent as the school safety specialist, appointment of the school nurses as district attendance officers, appointment of Pearson guidance counselors as substance awareness coordinator, appointment of the Pearson guidance counselor as the district homeless liaison, Appointment of the Pearson Guidance Counselor as the 504 Coordinator for M. Joan Pearson Elementary School. Appointment of the Walnut Guidance Counselor as the 504 Coordinator for Walnut Street Middle School. Appointment of the Superintendent as the District Anti-Bullying Coordinator. Appointment of the Pearson Guidance Counselor as the Anti-Bullying Specialist for M. Joan Pearson School. Appointment of the Walnut Guidance Counselor as the Anti-Bullying spe Specialist for the Walnut Street Middle School. Appointment of the Director of Facilities as District Asbestos Management Officer, H, excuse me, A-H-E-R-A -E Coordinator, Indoor Air Quality Designee, Integrated Pest Management Coordinator, 
district right to know officer, appointment of district custodians of records, superintendent for, super, for student and personal records, business administrator for financial and government records, approval of procurement of goods and services through the following cooperative purchasing agreements, Burlington County Educational Services Unit, New Jersey State Contract, Educational Services Commission of New Jersey, Hunterton County ESC, South Jersey Technology Partnership, New Jersey EDGE, and the Educational Data Services Consortium, Camden County Elect Educational Services Commission. Approval to establish petty cash accounts, $100 managed by the superintendent's secretary with a maximum payout amount of $50 and reported on a monthly by voucher, excuse me, on monthly by voucher. $100 managed by the administrative assistant with a maximum payout amount of $50 and reported on monthly by voucher. Approval of payments and line item transfers as necessary between the Board of Education meetings with the approval of the superintendent and business administrator and that such payments and transfers shall be reported to the Board of Education ratified and recorded in the minutes and the, of the next regular meeting. Approval of the chart of accounts, Exhibit D. Now we're going to um, look at the appointments for some liaison um, positions. Uh, we have the appointment of someone as a delegate to the New Jersey School Boards, an appointment of someone to the delegate of the Burlington County School Boards, an appointment of someone to the Delanco representative to be a Delanco representative on the Riverside Board of Education, and another individual to be appointed as a liaison to the Delanco Township Committee. So now that we're there, Mrs. Kamenugian, I want to share with the full board uh, the results of the survey when it comes to liaisons specifically, because the liaisons can be selected tonight by the president, depending on uh, who has expressed interest. So when I look at the spreadsheet that was generated from the survey, uh, when it comes to the board liaison uh, to Riverside, uh, there was a definitive yes from Cameron Jenkins, and there were maybes from Vince Caliguire and Phil Jenkins. So that, those are the selections for that liaison. And it, so Mrs. Kamenugian, if you want to decide that tonight, you absolutely can. Otherwise it, it can wait, but, but I will say um, that, that we have a sending receiving relationship. So if we appoint somebody today, that person can participate in Riverside board meetings right away and their first meeting is tomorrow. So then I would uh, nominate uh, or appoint Cameron Jenkins into that position since he was the definitive yes. I have, I have uh, a question about that. Um, from what I know, Cameron Jenkins has an internship with the, I, I believe the IT department in Riverside. Uh, would that be seen as a conflict of interest? It's possible that there's a conflict of interest. However, I can't really say Cameron can uh, luckily, my intern. You have to say that again, Kim. Can you guys hear me? Yes. We can now. Uh, can you say that uh, again. All right. My internship with the Riverside IT department ended last month on the 18th, so I am no longer attached to the Riverside School District as an intern. Okay. Even if you were. Cameron, um, before Cameron, when, before you were in that position, did you check with our um, school board representative, New Jersey School Board, to see if that was a conflict of interest working there? Did uh, you check about Mrs. that? Mrs. Dormo, just to explain, uh, he was not in a paid position uh, for Riverside. Uh, he was not. From in what I understand, unpaid is, I believe, also a consideration. If you would allow me to finish, uh, he was in an unpaid position. I to any contract with the Riverside. Uh, so based on my interpretation, I would not see a conflict with that. And not only that, he said that the internship is finished uh, as of a certain date, so. So again, uh, Cameron's non-conflicted and uh, I would appoint him as the um, um, representative on the Riverside School Board from Delanco. Thank you, Mrs. Karamanugian. Mm -hmm. I just have a general question, not uh, specific to anyone in particular. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Adams brought this up um, when we had our um, ethics training with him. If there is a board member who is conflicted, um, 
Could other board members, are, we should know about that, should we not, since it's our, um, we have the responsibility to make sure the district as a whole is run well. Shouldn't we know if there are board members who are conflicted? Are you referring to general conflicts of interest in any way, I'm shape, or form? I'm talking about someone who um, they work for a company that the company has a contract. I'm, I'm asking in general, not about anyone in particular, that they have, uh, they work for a, co a company that has a contract with the school district. Should board members be aware of that since we need to make sure the district is well run? Well, I mean, you're asking a question that I'm not capable of answering when you say, should board members know something, simply because we have the School Ethics Act, which with board members filling out school ethics forms each year, uh, administrators fill out the same forms. Uh, it's, it is certainly not my place to analyze and review those forms. Those are reviewed at the state well, level. At, but at the so, local level, whose responsibility is it to make sure that a board member is recusing themselves when they need to? Whose responsibility at the local level is that? The, it's the presiding officer's responsibility during a board meeting to conduct the meeting. So if a president is aware of a board member being conflicted due to a contract or something of that nature, the president needs to preside over the meeting and determine whether that board member can participate or not, depending just on the circumstances. Just to put a, a fine point on it, board presidents, it is their responsibility to know if a board member needs to recuse themselves. And that is public knowledge if there is a conflict of interest since all board members have to, to uh, reveal any conflicts of interest. The board president should know that, correct? I suppose, I mean, it really depends on when it comes up because a conflict of interest really depends. So for example, you know, if, if, if someone has, is working for a company, uh, it's, you know, that, that company, the, the board president might not know where other board members work and so on and so forth. The school ethics forms are, are collected at the state, at the district level, but then also reviewed at the state level. So it's, I mean, I'm not going to say that it's not the responsibility, but at the same time, I'm, you know, when it comes to a conflict of interest, I think it's a process of everyone learning, you know, what, what has to happen with this situation. There is no board president that is going to say, well, I'm the authority on this and I know exactly what to do in a conflict of interest situation. Okay, thank you. So it would be a process of me, uh, it would be Vicki, it would be our school board's rep, it could be our solicitor saying, here's how we proceed with something like that, depending on the nature of, of what's happening. Okay, and did you want to review that information regards, was there anyone specific that did stand out in regards to being a delegate to the school board? So for New Jersey school boards, uh, we had Harry Litwack give an emphatic yes, that he wants to serve in that role. Uh, we had a number of no's. Uh, we had maybes from Catherine Tursich Keeley and Phil Jenkins. Okay, so if Harry was the definitive yes for those specific positions, I would like to appoint him as the delegate to the New Jersey school boards and to as a delegate to the Burlington County school boards. All right. Does now, that mean his reports would be getting shorter? So we we can touch on that as soon as we, I, I think we should just finish this one out. And did we have a definitive, um, feed, some definitive feedback in regards to the liaison to the Delanco Township Committee? So we had some no's, we had a, a handful of maybes, but uh, we had one definitive yes for liaison to Township Committee and that was Catherine Tursich Keeley. Well, then I would um, appoint Catherine to that position as the liaison to the Delanco Township Committee. All right. Thank you. And um, so in speaking on that, what I'm going to recommend um, that each of the individuals do as delegates or liaisons to those positions would be after your said meeting that you write up a quick synopsis of what occurred so that you can, and you would send that via email to Joe and Vicki. And then um, that's something you can speak on 
at the meeting. That way it's a quick summary of the events. It's not something that, you know, goes long for either um, sector that they're gonna be representing. Um, and that way it's, it's pretty thorough and it'll be timely because they'll probably remember right from that moment. That sounds like a great solution. I mean, the Riverside, the young individual who normally represents Riverside does the same thing. So I think that it's only fair that we ask everybody to do it. It seems to work well. Did you, would you mind just like summarizing what you would like in a, I don't know. I guess it'll be in the minutes afterwards, so, but. Yeah, so there, no, like if you go to the meeting and you're sitting there and there are some fine points that you feel that are important enough to bring back to the to the school board, absolutely do so to put those in your, uh, in your report. You don't have to go and be like a reporter of the minutes whatsoever. That would be craziness <laughs> but definitely you know important um pieces of information that may or may not impact our school board or just like some good points that you heard that you find that would be valuable to those listening thank you mm -hmm. and uh marissa you had said that they should send it to me and to vicky and what we would do is disseminate that to the full board because uh, as i've mentioned to board members over the years that when you send email when you as a board member send emails to the full board you run the risk of creating a quorum that is not a an advertised meeting, and and it can create issues. So we uh, we like to avoid that. Correct. Okay, so then I'll move on to the next part of this and continue reading on on this very lengthy approval. So NJAC six A colon thirty two hyphen three dot two requirements for the code of ethics for the district board of education members one. Each district board of education shall discuss the School Ethics Act and the Code of Ethics for school board members pursuant to NJSA 18A colon 12 hyphen 21 as follows at a regularly scheduled public meeting annually. Adopt policies and procedures regarding the training of district board of education in, in understanding the Code of Ethics and provide documentation pursuant to D below that each member of the district board of education has received and reviewed the code of ethics each member of the district board of education shall sign an acknowledgement of receipt of the code of ethics for school board members contained where within njsa 18a colon 12 dot or whole hyphen 21 as follows this acknowledgement of receipt requires each district board of education member to read and become familiar with the code of ethics distribution of code of ethics acknowledgement forms for signature. I make a motion or I'm asking for a motion for the approval of these items. This is Phil, I'll make a motion. Anyone would like to second that? Yes. I'll second Cameron Jenkins. Okay. Are there any questions or comments? I have some um, comments, uh, just a couple. Uh, relatively small concerns. Um, just want to get this on public record. Um, uh, I think, so I have some concerns with the board policies and I, I know that it's been mentioned in a few of the past, you know, past few meetings that we may be amending some board policies coming up. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be on the policy committee. So I just want to mention two specific uh, concerns that I have. Um, one is the current board policies uh, basically prohibit us from posting on social media, anything related to school business, which I think is not a good strategy generally. I mean, I think it's not a good way to relate to the community. So I think what we should do is discuss some guidelines and then agree on some guidelines for how to post on social media. Um, so just throwing it out there. And then my second uh, issue with the board policy or, or a place where I, I can see some possible improvement is that um, I'm concerned about information flow within the board. Um, and in particular with the, the chain of command when it comes to uh, communicating with the public. So right now, if we go by the by the letter of the, the board rules, every email that I've received as a board member should be forwarded to the superintendent and then I let the superintendent respond. And so I'm my hands are kind of tied in the way that I communicate with the public. So I think those things are worth discussing either as a whole board or in the policy committee. Um, so it won't keep me keep me from voting uh, to uh, to uh, I'll adopt the policies, the existing policies for the new year, but I just hope those issues are addressed um, when they come up in the next few months. Thank you. Absolutely. We can definitely look at that and they'll be touched on more with our ethics training as well. Sure. We go into in depth with that information. 
Um, yep. Anything else? Questions or comments? Um, I had a comment about the point about the posting of the meeting uh, notification. Um, I just was wondering if it would be possible. I know the township owns the bulletin board over by the 7-Eleven, um, but we do send the information to the township if maybe it would be possible at some point to post a list of the meetings planned out for the year uh, so that it's up for the public to see in a common area. Okay. You're Dharma with a comment when you're ready. Wait, wait can Kathleen, I'm sorry, Mr. Sajikiwi, can you, um, <laughs> I, I missed that where you said you wanted it posted, where you thought it should so there's be. There's a bulletin board at the 7 Eleven in like central Blanco, if there's a central Blanco. Um, at the camp meeting grounds, that's what it's called. Yes, the camp meeting grounds shopping center. I think it's like right on the wall of the 7 Eleven, correct? It is, yeah. So there, that's where they post all of the town updates for like yard sale day and township committee meeting information. And so it's just a general place people look for information for a town. Yeah, I mean, there's there's nothing preventing us from putting a courtesy posting there. Uh, it's not a required posting. Similar to my email, I send an email to all of our recipients about board meeting. That is actually a courtesy because we're, we're actually technically not required to do that. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't see an issue with it at all. I mean, it, the more we get information out to the community, the, the more people are informed and educated. Yeah, more information is better. Thank That's you. right. It's a great idea. Okay, Vera Dharma, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. okay, looking at the list of awarded professionals, Parker McKay, Bowman, and Garrison. I was looking over the minutes from all the posted minutes from 2015 to 2020. We've had these same professionals for at least five years and probably more. Um, I asked in a board meeting, I, I sort of depend on um, Vicki and Mr. Mercier to guide me. I feel like I can't do that anymore. These, these professionals have yearly contracts and we should have been, we should put them out for bid every year because they have yearly contracts, not every three years. This district is in a financial crisis and we've had this same auditor for I don't know how long does anybody know how long we've had these professional services? 10 years, 20 years, does anybody know? Vera, it's I want it's I, I want these people to be out for bid every year, not every three years. It's been a That's long time. Uh, Vicki and I did talk about this just so the whole board and the public are aware. Uh, what happens, is, and you're talking about costs, uh, what happens is when we put things out for bid, uh, we, we get a, a high quality of service from the companies that we work with, and we do look at the bids. I mean, we're certainly not saying, well, you know, our, our business is going to the highest bidder. That, that's not how school districts operate. Uh, so when it comes to the bidding process and when it comes to what we're paying our professionals, a perfect example of this is the school physician, which we had a school physician for a number of years that was basically doing it pro bono for the district, basically. Uh, that was questioned by community members, and we said, he's basically doing it for free. And there were people saying, well, put it out for bid. Well, we put it out for bid and uh, because he actually stepped down from the role. Uh, we put it out for bid, and now we're spending far more than we ever did. So I'm not saying that we shouldn't put things out for bid, but, but sometimes you've got to be careful what you wish for when it comes to putting things out for bid and thinking we're going to save money. Sometimes we don't, and that, that is a reality. We are in compliance with the law and historically Delanco has done uh, gone out for bid every three years. So this is year two of that process. So three, two, two years ago, we called for bids for this particular contract yeah. and these yeah. came back as the lowest. So, right, so last year was the first year of it. This will be the second. If, if bids come back, and I had answered this in the email, if bids come back, if it's, if they come back with their contract and they can't do it for the same price or they want to change something material in the contract, then of course we would go out for bid to see, you know, what we can get at that point. Harry, we can't hear you. Right, and click on the blue. Here we go. Here we go. 
Okay. Um, wouldn't it be that every year there would be another third year coming up? That in other words, this year there would be approximately a third of our three-year contracts coming up? Or is it every three years, they all come up at the same time? Um, you would put them all out on the same year, and then... Well, that's what I'm saying, is that what we've done traditionally, so that all of them do line up the same year, as opposed to, like, school board members, you know, there's nine of them in every three years, you know, every it's, three it's years. It's like that, so, place. yeah, so they do, so we put out an RFP once every three years. The, the contracts are... Um, all one-year contracts. So okay, and am I correct in assuming that for some of the jointures now that we're even looking at, and some of the um, associations, buying groups, that those are there's benefits to having the, them be three-year or five-year or whatever the term is um, for the economic impact to be of any circumstance to us. Are you talking about the the, the consortiums? The... Yeah, yeah. In other words, they, they don't operate necessarily year to year. You can't necessarily, I mean, you, you can't set up businesses like that. I mean, you can, but that's not the way that you can operate with ongoing businesses. You, you want them to be there for more than just each year. You're not necessarily, it's not a benefit to have a, a, a lower person come in and do something that they're not, you know, they, they may be trained to, licensed to, but they never worked on this equipment or uh, provided this service for your, for so our for, district. For those, um, we're a member. And, and once you're a member, you're a member. And yeah. there's no fee for those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, it just would seem that then it would mean next year is a year that to really look at who we're doing business with, if there's any need to change. Would that be a fair? I'm sure they'll start reviewing the contracts in preparation for that bid. Um, that's my guess. But um, so in regards, so well, then we need to, if there's no other questions or comments, then uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Yes. Vicki, is it okay if I do mine at the end where I split it? Um, sure. Uh, if, if, if the board's okay with that, I'm okay with that. If... That's fine. Okay. Um, Mr. Calwire. Vote no. Mr. Dovey. Oh, you're on mute. The upper right upper, of your box. Lower left on mine. <laughs> can you hear me now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can. Uh, I vote yes. Um, Mr. Cameron Jenkins. I vote yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins. Yes. Mrs. Karmanugian? Yes. Mr. Litwack? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Mrs. Tursich Kiel? Yes. And Ms. Dormo? Um, before I vote, I'm just going to say my no votes are because I have no confidence in how this district is handled financially. My no votes are for a, B, D. Wait, wait, I, I want to get your comment down first, so hold on one second. <laughs> yeah, financially, they are screwed up. Okay, so your vote? Wait, A you for go? apple, no, is A for apple, B for boy, D for dog, H for horse, I for ice cream, X for x-ray, Z for zebra, double A. Those are no. 
It's okay. You ready for yes? <laughs> and the others. Okay. C for cat, E through G, J through W, Y, double B through double F. Okay, so your no's are A, B, D is in David, H, I, X, Z, double A. Correct. Okay, and then yes is C, E through G, J through W, Y, double B as in boy, uh, through double F. Correct. Thank you. Okay. The motion carries. And then we'll go now to uh, routine matters and, and the approval of minutes of December 9th, 2020 regular and executive session meetings. I need a motion. Phil with a motion. Second, anyone? Second, Harry. Questions or comments? Comments? Arma with a comment when you're ready. Mm -hmm. okay, bottom of page 16 in our board packet, the um, there was a notation in the minutes. The board we discussed. Want to discussed Maybe they could hear me. The board discussed. <laughs> the <laughs> They're laughing their ass off. Uh, uh, is anybody? Uh, is anybody need to be on mute? Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry about that, Vera. Albert, could you handle any of the members of the audience that might be off mute by accident? I'm going to start from the beginning. Um, page for 16. The bottom of page 16, there's the notation the board discussed the length of professional service contracts. I don't feel that at all reflects what we discussed. What we discussed was I was very surprised that. The board had no guidance about when we need to discuss contracts, that they're yearly contracts, that they go out for bid every three years. So that if I did want to question a contract for January, it was too late for me to do it. The time had passed. So now, I, you know, for all new board members, just realize you will not get the guidance you need. You, we ha we're on our own, basically. That's my comment. Uh, Vera, with all due respect, I disagree with that remark, uh, whether it's toward Vicki or myself, uh, we have been doing the best we can under the most challenging circumstances with a new BA who's doing the best she can when it comes to all of these things. So for you to say that you are on your own and that the board doesn't, or that the administrators don't provide guidance, to me is false. Uh, I, I share so many emails with the board. You, you have emails coming out your ears. So, I mean, that's that's my take on it. But no matter what, I, I just wanted to respond to that, that I believe Vicki is doing the best she can under difficult circumstances with our business office, COVID-19, difficult budget, brand new BA over the past year. Uh, that's all part-time part -time working two jobs. So all and, I can and say you might be right. That might be the best that anybody can do. But I would like to find that out for myself. Okay. okay. So let's put this to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, Dharma opposed. Anybody Voting abstain? aye. I missed that. I heard... Um, Cameron said, and then, yeah, Cameron said I and Vera opposed. And um, is anybody abstaining from voting? Okay, the motion carries. Um, next, accept November 2020 secretary and treasurer reports, which are in agreement. I need I'll make a motion. Thank you. Second, anyone? This is Phil, I'll second. Okay, um, all in favor? I have a comment Aye. when you're ready. Oh, I'm sorry, questions or comments, that's my fault. Dharma with a comment when you're ready. Sure, go ahead. Okay, I was looking at exhibit S, 
in the board packet, uh, there was a bill that was paid December 22nd. So these bills are already paid and now we're voting on it. So if we had any problem with a bill being paid, it's already out the door. So I'm not sure why we vote on that stuff. Like was, do you know what I'm saying? No, well, I, excuse me, could I, um, I don't know who you were addressing or just, but Vera, that's how business is done. I don't know how to explain it to you any other way than that. that well, the I, reason, I, the reason I ask is because there was a chart, there was money that went out in the, when, when were things discussed? When would a board member have a chance to um, talk about well, some you want sort to of pay payment? The, bill here, the, bill, the, the, the district gets the bill. The district pays the bill. That's Exhibit how, S is the, the bill list that hasn't pay. been paid yet. Yeah, you're talking about November, not December, Vera. Wrong I month. See some, I see something in there. It said December 22nd. Am I looking at the wrong date there? Paid in December 22nd? December 22nd? I don't know what you're looking at, so. So you're saying it was in November? It was paid in November. I think that we were, um, we put the report out in November, but it was regarding payments for December, my guess. So this is a general question, maybe, I mean, I just it don't know. It could be when it was so. put in for payment. Yes, because this was, we're accepting the November 2020 secretary and treasurer reports, which is going to reflect a December 22nd payment that was put in effect. So all of these charges were already sort of discussed, maybe in the finance committee agreed to, is that right? No. Can anyone tell me? So December 15th checks were for payroll. Yeah, it's a... That's not, not all payments are discussed. Some, some are just payments that we make because we pay bills like Harry is saying, or, or we pay our staff and so on and so forth. They're not, they're not. No, it's not a month by okay, month. Okay, the reason I'm, reason I'm asking this, and I'll just be straightforward so it'll be easier to figure out why, where I'm going with this, is, yeah, and I really cool. didn't want to bring it up because I won't put out the name, but it involves a, board member who worked for a company who the district does business with. I replied to you on that email. I don't remember you. I, and I checked my emails right up into the meeting. I don't remember this, this person saying I recuse myself because I'm conflicted with that particular company. I never remembered her saying that. There was no conflict there. She did had nothing to do with that. But she works for that company, and she herself, in her relative disclosure, so you don't know what that what that was for, what that payment was for. It says the name of her company, and she works it's for, for that my company. statutory uh, required bond. The, this that's the right? name of the company and she works for the company it's correct? a 500 dollar bond if she has nothing to do with it then she's not conflicted it's there's no contract there it's 560 dollars. it's required by law for me to have that and and it's that's all there is to it and she she so, doesn't own the company nor does she benefit from it it's a five to six hundred dollar she works, she works for bond. the company, but I'm going to have to delve that into more of this. Benefited from a $600 bill to a company that she happened. That's to not what the ethics law says. So she would have to just not, she would have to abstain from voting on that one payment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, that's all I uncovered. So I guess Vera, what you're claiming though, is that a board member who's no longer a sitting board member uh, that cannot defend herself right now whose school ethic statements we do not have in front of us because she very well could have put that on there. He did. I have them in front I, of I, me. I guess my question for you as a board member, again, with all due respect, is I'm asking this question about a board member that's no longer sitting on the board that may have voted on a five to six hundred dollar contract that that five to six hundred dollars benefited her in no way. Hey, Mr. Mersinger, going forward, because she's not here, going forward, I need to be clear about what these ethics rules are. And when I asked you before about should the president know, 
if there's a conflict, you did not give me a straight answer, but that's okay because you don't know. And I will find that out for myself it's not, and I, I'll report to the but, board. But I told I'll you, I said that it's difficult for me to say what the president should or should not know because the board president is a separate role from, from me. So when it, <gasps> and it comes to the forms that are filled out, oh my God. It, the ethics are not going to be known to the public. Like I, I, I think about it a lot. Like, oh, I can't get Hey, Vince, well, Vince, you're, not Vince you're not on mute. <laughs> Vince, yeah. <laughs> Vince. Not even we're, known to the board members. Thank, we're thankful for the children being here. See the democratic process because it's important for us to discuss topics. Absolutely. And, and this definitely could have been brought up prior and addressed prior than during a time where we're voting specifically on these. I did email about this, so that's. Um, did Vicky? Vicky, I'm, you respond. Did you respond? I feel like I was on some correspondence, but perhaps I, I, I had a lot of emails to reply to this week. Um, I replied to a lot Monday night. I replied to some today. Um, mm -hmm. There was an OPA request involved in that. I am working on, on that as well. And that, that's that's where we are. So I did reply today. And and I understand that she was probably working and probably didn't see that one. I just I just don't see a need in attempting to discredit a former board member who said I am not attempting to or, or discredit attempt anyone. That's I am trying it, to be is. I'm trying to understand that's, how we know if someone needs to recuse themselves. So when and you don't know that's, the answer. That's, that's a good you question. You do not but, know, and I will find it out because I, I'm on my you own. You can now. find out in February when Jesse Adams comes to do more ethics trainings with that's the board. A good point. Yeah, I will but definitely all, ask you. Vera, you are more than welcome also to reach out to Jesse for with questions. If you have yes. specific questions about ethics or the that actual day-to-day -day goings on and how we go about things to Jesse. He will be more than willing, because that's his job, to um, educate you and provide you guidance in any way, shape, or form. And that's, for the, that's also so for the board members to know as well. That's correct. I'm sure that Marissa, as the new president, you'll be interested to know of any co conflicts of interest to put Vera's mind at ease for future meetings. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's important to know for the new board members that the some of the information you want to know about how to be a good board member and a responsible board member, you have to take the initiative to learn. And it's through the school boards association at the county level, at the state level, and through Jesse Adams, who's your representative. So, yeah. you know, that's where these questions need to go. It's not the uh, superintendents and a business administrator's uh, job to educate the board members to be board members. Right. It's the board. The board has to have that responsibility amongst ourselves. And um, I think it's imperative. I mean, what I can say is that if anybody has any, Harry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but yeah. if anybody has any questions regarding ethics or how things should be going on with our governing abilities and how we should act, please reach out to me. If I don't have the answer, I will personally reach out to Jesse to gain that information for you. You're never- yeah, well, No, 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 I, what I'm saying is that I think it, it's incumbent upon everyone at their own basic level of personal ethics, business ethics, how they operate as a board member to you know, seek, if they have a question, they should be seeking it with Jesse. Oh, for sure. But if they feel uncomfortable making that first- Yeah, or if they go to I, you. I will do it for them yeah. as the president. I'll make sure to bridge that gap and and help facilitate whatever Thanks. needs to That's be done. Helpful. That's helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so any more questions or comments regarding this? Hey, this is, oh. my name's Devin. I um, am a parent of one oh. of the kids in the school. One moment, wait, one moment. So I'm going to open up the um, public comment on agenda items after student recognition. And that's a, during, during that time, you can actually talk about something that we've spoken yeah, about. I don't I'm need to talk about anything that you guys are talking about. I want just for you guys to just do the student recognition. It's getting late, yes. it's 840. What you guys yes. are talking about is very frustrating for those of us parents listening to it. So if you could just- You are hundred percent correct. Kids, Yes, that would be we're going to hopefully expedite this next section and, and move along quite quickly so that we can get to. Do you need to expedite it or can you just deal with the kids and let us do this with the kids first? 
and then you guys can go on with whatever it is that you have going on. Because this is very frustrating for the rest of us to listen to this. You are the only one. Yes. Um, Joe, so can we move the liaison reports until after student recognition well, and then quick vote on this and then jump, I'll quickly say hello yeah, and then we'll jump absolutely. to Absolutely, you're the presiding okay. officer. You can move that item on the agenda. Okay, okay let's, let's do it Thank now. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome, no problem. I totally understand. So let's vote quickly on this. All in favor, please vote. Uh, aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Opposed, Dormo. Okay, thank you. Anybody abstain? Motion carries. Um, quickly, I'm going to skip liaison reports. We'll address that later. Welcome, everyone. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us virtually this evening. I appreciate your patience this evening, as well as the nomination and sequential vote into this position as your school board president. I look forward to working and representing our school board as president alongside of some of our seasoned and newly elected board members, as well as our administrators and staff. With a new year, our sites are set high for positive growth and development, even considering the calamity our world is facing currently. I will work hard with my fellow board members to help govern fairly, promote trust and transparency, as well as facilitate proficiency to the best of my ability. With that being said, let's move this along. I will ask our superintendent, Mr. Mersinger, to begin the more enjoyable aspect of this evening's meeting, student recognition. Thank you, Mrs. Kamenugi, and I appreciate that very much. And I certainly understand that students have been waiting a long time to get to this point to hear their name announced for student recognition. Yes. So uh, without further ado, uh, we're going to begin. Uh, we're going to be begin with the younger students uh, right now, and uh, we'll move on to the Walnut students after that. So for M. Joan Pearson Elementary School, we're very proud of the following students that were selected as students of the month. And what Mr. Conti told me, uh, Lou Conti, the principal, told me, he said that these students have been showing great resilience, focus, hard work, and all sorts of positive traits during uh, the, the COVID-19 pandemic and the virtual learning that, that we're doing right now. So we really appreciate these students for, for staying focused and working hard. So without further ado, uh, in Mrs. Arangio's class, congratulations to... Emiliano Perez. Next, we have Mrs. Crozier's class. Congratulations to David Janot Baptiste. Moving on to first grade, we have Miss Smith's class. And congratulations to a student uh, who's been here. I've, I've seen her on the screen, Maggie Ogden. Congratulations. Uh, next, we have uh, Mrs. Weller's class. The student selected was Jessica Wright. Uh, next, we're moving on to second grade. Mrs. Uh, Ms. Lipinski's class, and that is Samer Walker. Congratulations. Uh, next, for second grade, uh, we have Mrs. McCann's class, and we have a student, uh, Selena, and I believe the last name is pronounced she. Uh, that is what I understand. She said no. It because <laughs> she said no. <laughs> no? How's it pronounced? Z? She? Yeah. She? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, I, Hello, I'm getting Selena. Over and over again. Selena, you can correct me. Uh, tell us how it's pronounced if if you feel comfortable. Or mom or dad. See ya. See ya. <laughs> Selena, see ya. Thank you, Selena. Congratulations. Uh, next, we have uh, for Mrs. Barbara's third grade class, Riley Pallet. Uh, moving on to Mrs. Fitzwater's third grade class. Class Parker Flanagan. Uh, in fourth grade, we have Mr. Stockton's class, Abigail Bemke. And fourth grade, Mrs. Wallace's class, that is Sienna Janik. Moving on to fifth grade, we have uh, Mrs. Brendel and Mrs. Letton's class, and the student nominated was Jesmarie Matos. Congratulations. And we have Mrs. Guckin's class finishing off Pearson, and that student is Kawan Duarte Pereira. So congratulations to all of our students, and thank you once again, Selena, see ya, uh, with that pronunciation. So that's Pearson, moving on to Walnut. So Mrs. Noble, Casey Noble, the principal of Walnut, explained to me that these students are selected, uh, just like we did last month, for different reasons, for, for positive things that they're doing in different areas. So we have two writers that were selected that have been doing a fantastic job. Those two writers are Morgan Renson 
and John Salerno. Congratulations. We also have two mathematicians that were selected. So congratulations to these fantastic math students. That's Emily Claus and Hunter Bilowski. Congratulations. Uh, next, we're moving on to the artist that was selected. So this student has done a fantastic job in art. That's Franco Tapia. Uh, most conscientious student and uh, excuse me, most conscientious student. And that's, that's one student was nominated for this. That is Joshua Simon. Uh, greatest perseverance. This student uh, does not give up even when it gets hard. And that is Matthew Roche. Next, we have the Walnut Whiz Kids. These mm -hmm. students are showing uh, like an, an all around, uh, I guess what we could say is that they're well-rounded. They're doing great in many different areas. And so we would like to congratulate Gianna Teat and Lillian Brisky for being the Walnut Whiz Kids. Uh, next, we have the fantastic scientist for the month, and that is Sydney Greenidge. Congratulations. And finally, oh, sorry, there's one more. Uh, finally, we have the advisory all-star. And the advisory program that we do at Walnut has to do with social emotional learning uh, to help kids when it comes to all sorts of different things, uh, emotions, uh, social interactions, relationships with each other, relationships with adults, and so on and so forth. Uh, all sorts of positivity coming out, out of that. So our advisory all-star is Kayla Arnold. So once again, congratulations to all of these students. I also congratulate them and thank them for being very patient throughout this process, the democratic process of a board of education, voting, discussing matters of importance, and so on. So you've seen it happen. Uh, once again, congratulations to our students. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for your patience as well. It's greatly appreciated and congratulations to every one of you. Um, if you guys wanna drop off, you can. But I'm going to continue on to finish up, but we do have public comment on agenda items in case anybody wants to comment on things before you, you leave. So we'll quickly touch on the liaison reports. Um, Riverside High School. Anybody have any comment about that? Because I think Rose was the liaison well, that, for that. For, for the student liaison, it would be Gracie Iwaniki. And uh, so mm -hmm. Gracie has not been able to participate in meetings uh, for a number of months. But what I'm going to do is reach out to Riverside and um, and and talk to the advisor about that and, and see what happens. We do want to get Gracie involved. Absolutely. Um, the Delanco PTO. Hi, Wendy Flanagan, Delanco uh, PTO secretary. Um, we don't really have much to report except our next PTO meeting will be January 19th at 7 p.m. Um, an email will go out with a link um, to join us for that. So I hope to see um, lots of people joining and uh, come out. Thanks. Thank you so much. DISA Recreation and Township Committee. Mike, is there anything great that you uh, want? We on? had a reorg last Monday night. It uh, Ours only took an hour, so we're, we're ahead <laughs> there. Um, uh, the question that came up from uh, Ms. Tursich uh, uh, Keeley earlier, uh, you just want the meetings, uh, the school board meeting dates posted? Yeah, there uh, we have a full agenda for the rest of the year with the planned dates. Yeah. Um, Anything else? Because there's four yet. bulletin boards in town, so I'll get it. I'll, I'll pull it off your website and uh, have it posted. So that helps. Awesome. I mean, that, that you could paper the town with it because you know, it's. <laughs> That's the business of the board. The they'll be, they'll the be knocking so, down absolutely. your doors to attend this, you know, your 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 school board meetings if they're, they're this entertaining. So <laughs> they can also right. watch the so, video. So we're off to a good year. Uh, be COVID safe. We got a couple more months to hunker down here. Be careful. Vaccines are coming. So, um, but uh, I'm, I'm glad to see the the flickering flame of democracy exhibited by by this group tonight. Um, and the give and take and back and forth and the questions and the answers and the research. So um, it's something that needs to be uh, pushed up through uh, the elective process that we can uh, get more people with uh, um, ethics and honesty and forthrightness and doing and hear all the those attributes on. So anyway, good work all and uh, 
keep the lines of communication open. Well done. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate that. Um, I'll open us up to public comment on agenda items. I think. Um... Also, uh, Mrs. Karamanugi, and we did have an online form like we've had for a number of months. Uh, we did not have any comments or agenda or non-agenda items on, on that form. Okay. Did um, the uh, infor information when I was away, was that was my turn up for that? For the county? Uh, no, I, I didn't touch on that. I didn't see that come up yet. So I'm sure that there's okay. no, no, I didn't touch on that yet. Cl closer okay. to the end. Yeah. Okay. I always get them mixed up. In those two yeah. No, I know it, it, it can be confusing for sure. Okay, so then I guess I'll, I'll close. I think there is a parent who has, uh, she's raising her hand. Yeah, um, Lori Van Genderen. Um, we received um, an email from Mrs. Thomas that our daughter Ella was going to be recognized tonight. Um, and she wasn't. And I don't know if that was just an oversight. Um, but I just wanted to bring that to the board's attention. Um, and I, and I also just wanted to make a comment though, that I do think it's an important process that um, you all are going through. I know it can be a little tedious for people who are used to attending uh, meetings like this, but sitting on the planning board, um, I know that, that it's a very important process um, that you all are, are um, achieving uh, with your back and forth and your, your dialogue and, and your, um, you know, being watchdogs over um, not only uh, what happens in the school system, but how business gets done. And as a parent of a child in the school system and two children that have gone through the school system, I appreciate it. I appreciate the time and, and the discussion that's taking place. So um, thank you very much you. for what you're doing. I know, it, I know it's a thankless job, um, but it is appreciated um, by parents of the system. So thank you. Thank you so much. Joe, you have so uh, I don't have Ella on my list, uh, Mrs. Van Gendren. I apologize for that. I, I received the lists from the principals, but uh, what we can say is uh, congratulations to Ella for being part of this board meeting and seeing the process like you're saying. Yeah. And uh, that means that she has perseverance and, and, uh, and all sorts of other positive traits. Uh, and who knows, maybe she's a future Delanco board member. Never know. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you very much again. Thank you. Okay, if there are no other comments on agenda items, I'll close. All right, and we'll move on to the superintendent's report, Mr. Messinger. All right, thank you, Mrs. Kamenugian. Mm -hmm. So I have tabs open with all sorts of things. The packet, the agenda, okay, here we are. <laughs> a motion is requested to approve the following items. Letters A through J on the superintendent's report. And um, I'll have, I, I'm not gonna provide any other comments at this time, uh, but uh, that's it. I, I request a motion for those items. This is Phil, I'll make a motion. This is Bob, I'll second it. Okay, questions or comments? Okay, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody Aye. opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Okay, instruction and program committee report. Oh, you're welcome. No. Uh, so, I guess I will read this. Yeah. I believe that. So, so basically, Marissa, you you become the committee chairperson. Uh, no, I, I'm kidding, of course. But you you have to read all the you read all the committees right now because we don't have any committee members yet. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Not a problem. A special education classifications and placements confidential exhibit Q. And I'll move right on to the finance committee report. A motion is requested to approve the following items. A, necessary line item transfers for November 2020, Exhibit R. B, monthly line account certification for November 2020. Payment of bills in the amount of 547,971 and six cents. 
And I'm sorry, is there an amount that's supposed to be listed there to be distributed? That was um, sent out last night. Okay, I didn't see that. What would that's, that amount be? That's because of the um, the large gap in the between the December, January, and then the February meeting. So mm -hmm. uh, when when the mail came in on Monday, it was it came in very late on Monday, so it was processed processed on Tuesday. That's cool. What is the number? I'm getting it now. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Um, Two hundred and three thousand. Eight hundred sixty-seven and fifty-two cents. Okay, two hundred three thousand eight hundred sixty-seven fifty-seven cents. Distributed exhi exhibit S. Submission of the Securing Our Children's Future grant, Alyssa's Law Compliance and Security, to the Department of Education in the amount of twenty-two thousand eighty, and affirmation of the availability of local funds should the total costs associated with the work exceed our grant allowance. Of the Burlington County Insurance Pool Joint Insurance Fund distinctions earned by the district with financial award in the amount of $5,000, Elite 2 Safety Award, loss ratio below 50%, 10-year average loss ratio below 50%, ratified bills of payments in the amount of $8,808.01 with check 2192-2193, Exhibit T, NutraServe's financial report for the month of November 2020, Exhibit U. I need a motion. So moved, Robert. Thank you. And a second, please. Second from Phil. Okay. Um, questions or comments? Uh, just one comment, Marissa. And this is for new board members. The uh, joint insurance fund that we belong to. You know, we as a town, we as the school board got an award of $5,000 for doing the job very well. The schools do it. The township belongs to the GIF also. And it's something that actually works out to be cheaper for the schools by belonging to the joint insurance fund. That's my only comment. I have a comment mm -hmm. um, uh, regarding that joint insurance fund. We are also receiving an award for... Um, uh, notifying the insurance company within 24 hours of any incidents. Um, that was left off when they when they gave out the awards and I emailed them and told them that I thought it was wrong. <laughs> um, so we're, we're getting um, either an, another 500 or $1,000 for that. Awesome. That's great. Thank you so much for doing that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? All right. Motion carries. Operations. Um, Marissa, Mrs. Okay, I was not. I was not unmuted. Oh. Uh, can I give my votes now? Oh, okay. for sure. Okay. I vote no for everything except for letter E. E is an elephant. Is a yes. Okay. So, uh, Marissa or Mrs. Karamanugi, and I just wanted to go back to student recognition. So, I had two lists for student recognition. One list included Ella Van Gendren, the other did not. And she was the only one missing off the list. I don't know if Lori Van Gendren's still on here or if Ella is still on here. She was very patient. She was recognized as a writer for Walnut, uh, just as a couple yeah. of people were. So- uh, what Congratulations, we, I think they might've dropped is, off. Uh, I, we could give her some kind of special treat for my mistake because somehow her name was on one list, but not on the other. Uh, so Mrs. Noble, thank you for sending me that email saying, here's the correct list because she, uh, Mrs. Noble has sent me the correct list already. And for some reason, one name got deleted off it by accident. So I apologize. I take responsibility for that hundred percent and we'll make it up to Ella Van Gendry. Absolutely. Let's invite her back next month. <laughs> we should. <laughs> well, we'll make it up to her by not inviting her back. <laughs> the poor thing. <laughs> So, okay, in regards, okay, moving on. Operations and Facilities Committee report, the report on maintenance activities, Exhibit B. Policy Committee report, there is no report. Personnel Committee report, a motion is requested to approve the following items. Updated substitute list, Exhibit W. Job descriptions for certified staff members provided by NJSBA, Exhibit X. I need a motion, please. Motion itself. Second, Robert Dewey. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All right. This is a roll call vote, please. Mr. Caliguire? Yes. Ms. Darmo? Yes. 
Mr. Dovey? Yes. Mr. Cameron Jenkins? Yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins? Yes. Mrs. Karamanugian? Yes. Mr. Litwack? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Mrs. Catherine, um, Mrs. Thursage Keeley? Yes. I'm sorry. Okay, motion carries. Um, Board of Ed liaison reports. We have Riverside. I don't know if anybody would have any information, but Rose was our liaison previously for that. So, Joe, unless you have anything, if not, I'll just move on. I'm just aware of their meeting happening tomorrow, uh, which is why it's good that we have a new liaison. But Excellent. How are they providing education? All virtual or? That's actually an excellent question because uh, there are so many different things happening throughout the county. The answer to that that I can give you right now is I do not know. Um, the last I actually the last that Robin and I communicated was this morning, but it wasn't discussed. We talked about other topics. Uh, so I'll, I, I, we can find that out. I, I'm not sure if anybody is fully aware yet if uh, if Riverside is virtual like we are right now going back on the 19th because every district has so many unique circumstances. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Cameron can find that information out and let Joe know, and then he can let the rest of us Absolutely. know. Any I should have asked yes, Robin this morning. It was just, we talked about so many other topics. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and Harry, uh, for New Jersey school boards and Bronson County school boards, anything quickly you wanna report? Yeah, there was a meeting on the 14th of December, uh, the Cal meeting, which is the county leaders throughout the state. There's another one coming up on the 11th of this month, but on the 14th, what they had was a, they had three people, one person who was both a board member and a, and a principal and advisors for a program at West Windsor, Plainsboro. And it really was all about secondary education, but some of the issues that they brought up, Joe and other people might find pertinent, Jermaine, was that because of things that the expectations that even same thing our eighth graders have of graduation and dances and parties and trips, whatever, that they have to, um, change some of the rituals or make make new rituals is what they were saying and they had two students who were involved with um, doing that at a high school level and using the democratic process um, and how to have the students help them that to be somewhat self-governing and speaking truth to power uh, and breaking down barriers and they um, some of the the um, I guess that curriculum that's being looked at that evolved in a way from the Black Lives Matter about inclusiveness and uh, trying to make sure that um, that students felt that they had some new rituals if we couldn't do the old rituals and having them help create it. And um, they're also talked about career testing, uh, special ed, the bottom and the top, and the services that are provided under the federal law, 142, which is that the, the federal government is supposed to be providing 40% of the special education budget to the districts, and they do not. They provide 18% that is the flow through that comes. So we can blame the state all we want, but they're not getting the money from the federal government. And that may change as of some of the situation that happened today. Um, and that's about it. And January 11th is the next meeting. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And there's also, and some of you may have attended this in the past at the county level, which is, Joe knows about it, the eighth grade uh, usually in the spring, the county meeting it celebrates one eighth grade student from each of the 21 districts in the county and board members, their parents, 
interested. I remember in, Alexa Karamanukian being part of that. Yeah, yeah. So that <laughs> it, what, it, what may be doing is that the students would be doing a film, that they would do a video. Uh, I just got that information today. So, yeah. and for the new board members, it's virtual and you're more than welcome to be part of the, uh, the county meetings. So yeah, Thank Harry, you. you're talking about the eighth grade dialogue, which is a great thing. We couldn't do it last year. Uh, and then this year, maybe it, like it'll, it'll take on a, you know, a, a new form in, in. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But I just today, there was something sent when I received that information about that meeting on the 11th, that there was also going to be quarterly, you know, that, that quarterly meeting. And I, if I didn't read it incorrectly, if I'm remembering correctly, it had to do with um, being like presenting a video that, that they would do it via video. So that may be something interesting. Like, and once again, it ties into, I guess, creating new rituals of how to keep things active. So that was coming up and then for the following year. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, also Marissa, back to Riverside. I looked through my emails. Our most recent communication about their closure or remote learning uh, is from December 7th, where they indicated that they will be fully remote until January 19th. Just what mm -hmm. we're doing. So. Okay, well, there we go. All right, if there's nothing else, we'll touch on old business. We have election, official election results. Um, Mr. Dovey received 1,087. Mr. McLaughlin received 1,243. And Mrs. Tercet Keeley received 1,254. And I'm terribly sorry if I murdered that as somebody who has a crazy last name myself. Totally fine. So I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> terribly sorry. <laughs> New business. Um, Board of Ed sessions uh, provided by NJSBA representative Jesse Adams, as we were talking about earlier, will be on February 10th, 2021 at 6 p.m. And it will touch on board ethics. Then we have another one on March 10th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Um, for board member roles and responsibilities. April onward, we'll speak of the development of the Board of Ed communication protocols and norms. So all of those um, were important topics that were touched on throughout the agenda that we will be touching on as well um, at a further date, a date move in the future. Um, Board of Ed committees for 2021, we will be looking at that. I'm gonna sit down and um, talk with uh, Vic Vicki and Joe to discuss the results of the surveys we put out and, and um, see where we're interested and uh, we feel will be best fit. Um, and then the Board of Ed budget workshops for January, February and March of 2021, um, we'll make sure to bring that information to you once we have information from it. Um, are all distributions out? Well, just, uh, sure. Marissa, just about those workshops for the budget, just so the board's aware, it what it means is that we could potentially have, have extra meetings on the calendar uh, related to the budget. Now, we already do have a budget uh, workshop meeting that's, that's on the calendar, uh, but, but beyond that one that's already there, uh, we're talking about possibly adding one or two more, depending on the need for discussion about really significant topics related to the budget. Yes, and they truly are significant and impactful. So we certainly will need to meet and discuss quite a bit. Okay, um, any additional distributions that need to go out? I'm thinking no. Um, I'll open this up to public comment or non-agenda items. Okay. Is there anybody? Because I only see one screen, so it's kind of hard to. The, the person that was here before that was she just wanted the to let us know that she was waiting. Oh yes, correct. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Okay. I, if there's nobody that would like to comment on non-agenda items, I will close it. And then um, executive session. Do we have a need to go into executive session? So you know. during a typical meeting, either Vicki or I will say that there's a need for executive session based on confidential matters, personnel, mm -hmm. student matters, uh, legal matters, security. Uh, any, uh, these topics are considered confidential and should not be discussed in public. 
Uh, but we, we did not have a need for that. We did not. But board members, if, if board members have a need for that, uh, you as the presiding officers can say, okay, we will go into executive to discuss such and such topic. And what I'll do is send a, a link to the board members for that purpose. Okay. Does anybody have any comment on that? No. Okay. So then um, I make a motion or I need a motion to adjourn. Cameron Jenkins makes the motion to adjourn. Nice, Cam. Anybody? Second? I'll second it. Thank you so much. Um, motion carries. All those in favor of it, though. All those in favor. I'm sorry. Gosh, I was so close. So close. Almost, yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Opposed to not adjourning. Yeah. Staying well, <laughs> you know, so All right. Motion says, carries. As the new president, the, these board meetings are going to be an exercise in humanity for all of us because you know I can count the, the dozen mistakes I made tonight. But I, it, you know what I mean. It's it, I, I just I want to welcome the new board members. Welcome you as the new president, even though we've worked together now for a number of years, and I, I do look forward to working with this group. Uh, we have very ambitious district goals that we put in place. And, uh, you know, I know that the board wants us to accomplish those. I do. Our families do. Our teachers do. So, we're, you know, our, and, and it's for our students. So it's, uh, I appreciate everything. So thank you. For sure. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's an honor to join okay. the board. Glad to be here. It's an honor to have you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night.